Join me today in Grinnell College's Center for Careers, Life, and Service Training on Volunteer Management. My name is Karina Wilson, and I am the 2019 Service and Social Innovation AmeriCorps member at Grinnell College. With at least six years of experience in managing volunteers and a lifetime of growing up in the nonprofit realm, I will be leading you through key topics that are essential to overseeing and connecting with volunteers. Whether you are a nonprofit staff member, volunteer, or supervisor of volunteers, in this training we will review four simple and primary topics for effectively managing volunteers. Come along as we discuss the purposes and methods of recruiting, tracking, engaging, and retaining volunteers. Effectively recruiting volunteers is important for the sustainability of your organization. In this first section, we will review the elements of recruiting, which include advertising, onboarding, and training. Advertising for volunteer support is just as important as advertising for your organization. Not only does the style of advertising bring awareness to your organization, but it also produces networking opportunities and showcases your interest and value in volunteers. There are two primary ways you can advertise, physically and virtually. Physical methods of advertising include encouraging your current volunteers to recruit friends and family, hanging posters, and making announcements at community events in person. Virtual methods include posting on social media accounts, sending emails, hosting virtual information sessions, and creating a volunteer information section on your organization's website. The following are questions to consider when advertising for volunteer engagement. What advertising methods does your organization already use? What advertising methods do you think your organization could try out? Which advertising methods does your organization excel at? And finally, what challenges does your organization face when it comes to advertising for volunteer engagement? After gaining volunteer, onboarding is often the first time you will meet your volunteers in person. Onboarding is typically a part of the training process and is the most important initial interaction because it allows you to set the stage for how relationships and dynamics will look like between volunteers in your organization. While it may seem like a minimal and short part of introducing your organization, it is a heavy influencer of dedication and rapport built between the volunteers and your organization. Most onboarding methods include providing your organization's mission statement and values and ensuring all required paperwork and processes are understood and taken care of. However, creating an environment that is welcoming, inviting, and kind, utilizing informal activities and diverse, equitable, and inclusive resources is just as important as the following methods. The following are questions to consider when onboarding volunteers. How does your organization communicate their missions and values to volunteers? What kind of environment does your organization create while onboarding? And finally, does your organization find ways to resonate with volunteers' passions and interests in the process? After onboarding, training is the final process for attaining a full recruited volunteer. Your organization most likely already has a training process. However, paying attention to and improving the structure, inclusiveness, and consistency within your training process is vital to the success of your volunteers. The critical information you should include in your training session are general mandatory information, such as scheduling, organizational processes and required paperwork, expectations and repercussions, providing on-hand demonstrations and experiences, as well as hosting a time for connecting with your volunteers. The following are questions to consider when training volunteers. What are the rules and regulations? What are the specific tasks and responsibilities of volunteers? What are the surrounding community's cultural, social, and traditional values? What does scheduling and communication look like within your organization? What is okay and not okay to do as a volunteer? What commitment does your organization ask from volunteers? And finally, are there aspects of diversity, equity, and inclusion addressed in the training process? When we focus on the full process of recruiting volunteers more intentionally and relationally, we begin to further our efforts of sustaining volunteer engagement, which allow us to collect and utilize consistent volunteer data for further support.
Tracking volunteer engagement is vital to the longevity of your organization. Understanding the purpose of tracking volunteer engagement and the processes that contribute to developing, sustaining, and utilizing your track data will support the continuation of your organization. Creating goals is a great first step for volunteer engagement because it allows your organization to put into perspective realistic possibilities of completing activities, events, and projects utilizing volunteers. It is important to first identify and understand your organization's goals, aspirations, and visions for projects and how volunteer engagement can support those components. Talking with your supervisor about the ways they would like to see volunteers complete the goals, aspirations, and visions for the organization could be extremely useful when coordinating volunteers. Next, creating SMART goals regarding volunteer engagement that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound will create a realistic structure to begin tracking progress or regression. Finally, keeping, reviewing, and even revising a written record of these goals with your supervisor for volunteers to agree upon will further foster accountability and motivation. Many organizations have sign-in systems for volunteers. Whether your organization has a paper sign-in sheet or a virtual sign-in system online, the following components are important to include in your sign-in system. Inventory systems are used to track, record, and utilize data for funding purposes in nearly all nonprofit programs and organizations. If you work in a nonprofit or your organization has a tracking and inventory system, understanding how your organization utilizes the data for grant and funding purposes is vital. While data is impeccable for the funding processes of most organizations, knowing how to utilize your volunteer inventory system to maintain accountability will create a healthy and strong community in your workplace. Without accountability, organizations can often be taken advantage of. Taking the time to talk with your supervisor about how they view volunteer commitment and accountability can be a great place to begin. The following are questions to consider when creating, examining, or improving your tracking systems. What goals does your organization strive for? Does your organization have a sign-in system? How does your organization utilize information from your sign-in system? Does your organization hold volunteers accountable? And finally, what benefits could accountability bring to your organization? Keeping track of volunteer engagement allows for financial support in most organizations. However, Learning how to utilize this data to create environments of discussion and accountability with volunteers can help improve the relational engagement from volunteers as well. Keeping volunteers engaged throughout their time with your organization will support what your organization can accomplish in the long run. Through engagement, volunteers will feel valued. And in the following slides, we will review some key strategies for maintaining volunteer engagement. A fundamental way of engaging your volunteers is being able to align and present your organization's purposes and values with your volunteers. In order to do so, first you need to clearly present your organization's purposes and values. Then ask about, learn, and connect your volunteers' purposes and values to your organization's. Engagement will bolster your organization's effectiveness and stability. Empowering volunteers throughout their entire experience with your organization communicates the value and excitement you hold for them. It also maintains engagement from volunteers in healthy and supportive ways. There are two instances where volunteer empowerment takes place, during onboarding or within long-term continuous empowerment. Most organizations utilize onboarding to empower and excite their volunteers about what they will be doing. Utilizing unifying language, success stories, and even small items of purpose assist with empowering volunteers in the beginning. Another method of empowerment can be long-term and continuous communication of the impact volunteers make on the issues or communities they help serve. Communicating the statistical impact of volunteers through posters, emails, and or text messages could be a very simple and easy way to keep volunteers engaged and determined. If you are a volunteer coordinator or supervisor, you should know your organization's capacity best. If your organization has the size and availability that allows for different positions, 
consider placing volunteers based on their strengths or wants, personality, and experience or interest. Taking an additional effort to pay more attention to these aspects of your volunteers will show and communicate that you value who they are, not just what you can receive from them, which will further keep volunteers engaged and in support. The following are questions to consider when further engaging your volunteers. How does your organization engage and empower volunteers? Do your volunteers empower the organization? What are ways you can engage volunteers continuously? What could empowering volunteers more frequently look like and result in for your organization? Seeking out ways to keep volunteers engaged through frequent and continuous methods of empowerment fulfills your volunteer sense of completion in their life's purposes and values through their connection to your organization. Staying attentive to the various and doable ways you can engage volunteers contributes to the retention of volunteers. In this final session, we will be talking about retaining volunteers. Once you can retain a strong volunteer base, it allows your organization to grow in other ways. Retaining volunteers rejuvenates, sustains, and grows both your volunteer base and your ability to focus on other facets of your organization. Considering and better understanding the differences in your volunteer populations will go a long way in helping you think of retention methods for each population. First, consider the many differences that will exist with each volunteer, such as age, being a parent, being a student, working multiple jobs, and etc. Then, think about the different pressures and obligations of these different populations and individuals. So let's say you have a group of individuals who all currently live in your community, and they all have some sort of capacity to volunteer. One is a senior citizen in a nearby neighborhood who has lived here for a generation. Another is a younger undergraduate student who just got to college and has no idea where to start. But then you also have a young professional who races and manages a nearby bicycle shop and plans to live in the community at least another five years. And finally, you have a young family looking for a volunteering opportunity who just moved to the community and plan on staying for at least three years. Depending on each individual, obligation, and length of stay, retention will look different. Volunteers are more likely to remain when they feel valued and supported within their capacities. The following are best practices for retention, which include building community and consistency, creating an enjoyable and intentional environment, and appreciating and valuing your volunteers. Now, some of these may sound like very big, broad goals. However, I will give you some very simple and easy methods you can utilize to begin fostering these practices and values. When thinking about retaining volunteers, a method that is often utilized is recognition systems, such as Volunteer of the Month, or even personality recognitions like Silliest or Sweetest Volunteer of the Month. Another method to utilize would be appreciation notes or cards. A larger scale method you could try out if you have the resources and financial ability to would be hosting appreciation events with fun activities and games. Finally, one method that does not directly involve the volunteers is creating or improving volunteer coordinator or supervisor transitions. While this last method seems a little odd, it is actually imperative to the consistency and flow of your organization, and it also directly impacts your volunteers. The following are questions to consider when reflecting about ways to retain and grow your volunteer base. Does your organization retain volunteers well? What volunteer populations serve with your organization? Is there a practice for retention you would be interested in utilizing? Which methods for retention do you already use? Could you improve them? Knowing how to create spaces where volunteers feel comfortable and valued is not just essential, but influential. When you retain a strong volunteer base, even with volunteers who may not stay so long, you have more opportunities and time to allocate elsewhere within your organization. When volunteers spend their time serving in healthy and strong environments, they are more likely to stay invested. Mastering the basics of managing volunteers is just the beginning. However, creating and fostering more intentional and relational spaces is the very next step. The following quiz will test your understanding of the topics covered today. Thank you for taking the Grinnell College's Center for Careers, Life, and Service Volunteer Management Training.